At this point, we all know Inazuma is almost here. 1.7 is going to be definitely Inazuma. But I also think it won't take as long as we think to get the, the next area, Sumeru. About a month and a half ago, I made a video called Predicting the Next 5 Updates in Genshin Impact, where I, well, predicting the next 5 updates in Genshin Impact. Admittedly, my predictions weren't exactly spot on due to the fact that Mihoya threw as a curveball with a summer event for 1.6. Uh, however, I think that all this did is delay my predictions, not not change them or incorrect them completely outright by just one update, and I'm confident I have figured out this time around. Hopefully. <laughs> Hello everybody, what's up, how you doing? Today we're going to be talking about the updates coming up real soon for Genshin, uh, going from all the way from 1.7 slash 2.0 to 2.1 slash 2.4. So, it's gonna be, we're gonna touch on a lot of info, uh, and, sneak peek, little sneak peek here, Inazuma won't come all in one go. It's gonna be split across updates, trust me, you'll understand why. Because I took too long to make this video, the 1.7 update uh, live stream has already been announced, uh, but, just to show you, to make it completely clear, look, I modified it last July 2nd, so all of this information has no leaks, no nothing, all 100% cleared and, uh, you know, fr leak friendly, with no information coming in the next week, etc, etc. So, let's talk about the content coming to the next few updates. So, first, I f Inazuma is gonna 1000% come in 1.7. Why do I think that? Well, it really is just a... <laughs> they showed us um, Yoimiya, Ayaka, and Sayu uh, through teasers like almost three weeks ago at this point, I want to say. So at this point, it's kind of already confirmed. Uh, and in the most recent teaser um, that, you know, the, all of this information was collected beforehand. But in the recent teaser for the live stream, we can see a new statue of the Archon most likely the Electro Statue of the Archon. However, why did I say that Inazuma won't come all together in one update? Well, first of all, I think that Mihoyo, they don't want to repeat the same mistakes that they've done before. What do I mean by that? There was a period between 1.3, 1 1.4, 1 uh, and some people even 1.5 where we had nothing to do. There was small little minigame events, and most people considered those months the dead zone of, the dead air of Genshin Impact. And, uh, you know, a lot of people left, stopped playing the game during those months. Why, why would it make sense to sort of split up the update and delay it and sort of release it in batches? Well, I think personally that by separating the updates apart, and making, I don't know, half of Inazuma in 1.7 and the second half on 1.8, uh, they can spread out the content of Inazuma enough for people to, you know, have a, something to look forward to in the short run, as well as give me Hoyo time to for them to work on the next uh, area, which is going to be Sumeru with the Dendro element and so that we don't have a lot of dead area, dead, dead area, dead air uh, patches like 1.3 or 1.4 and instead we have a bunch of really solid back-to-back -back, uh, patches uh, that doesn't necessarily just like completely just obliterate us with content and then we run out by the time the update ends but instead just kind of like pads it out enough for everyone to stay happy uh, for until the next update. So, for 1.7, I think we're gonna get, obviously, most of the Inazuma areas except the main city. Why do I think that? Well, it makes sense because the Inazuma city is closed off and it would make a lot of sense in terms of the plot for us to have a lot of Archon quests and a lot of exploration outside of the city. And then in the next update, they add in the city and uh, because we finally get to have some access into the city. Then we're gonna obviously get the Electro Traveler. Uh, we will also are gonna get Farming and Flowers in the Serenity Teapot because they've already talked about it twice in developer notes and said that they were gonna talk about it soon. And there is literally nothing more soon 
uh, than the 1.7 update, uh, uh, like, live stream. So literally, we're probably gonna get that. And I've also heard around about fishing. I can't remember from where, but I think I heard it from, like, all the way back when the game released, that there was a fishing minigame to get fish instead of, like, you know, hunting them by picking them up in the water and that stuff. So, but, and I've, I've, I've heard of those talks come back up again, uh, not within leaks, but just like normal conversations about the uh, fishing activity. So hopefully we get fishing. I think it would be pretty, something pretty simple and pretty, you know, pretty good to pat out for those uh, achievement hunters such as myself that want to get all the Primo gems as possible, you know, to like get a, a fish for every type, a fish every type of fish type of thing. So I think this would be, you know, a pretty easy add in to pad more content to the 1.7 update. So for 1.8, there's gonna be the second Inazuma patch and the anniversary event. If we go to, I think it's this one. Yeah, okay. If we go to this little timeline I've made here, we can see that the game came out on the 20th of September and by 1.8, 1.8 starts on the 7th of September. So midway through, 1.8 is going to be the anniversary of the game. And usually, just in case you don't know, gacha games such as uh, Genshin have anniversary events where they give out a ton of free wishes, they bring back a ton of old char fan favorite characters, a lot of events and a lot of free materials. So, you know, most likely we're going to see a, an anniversary event for Genshin. Uh, just to, in the sweet, sweet little middle in the, uh, of 1.8, which brings us to what is the anniversary event and the Inazuma patch gonna have? Well, I, we're gonna get the city and the second chunk of the story, like I mentioned. Um, we are also gonna get probably a boss battle along the lines of what we got for Tartaglia, child, uh, domain to get boss materials, that type of stuff. Uh, we will also probably get furniture for Inazuma because I think they would want to pat that out um, instead of throwing everything in Azuma in 1.7, again, they want to like split the updates. So they'll give the Serenity Teapot crowd the farming and flowers in 1.7, and then they'll give the uh, Inazuma furniture themes in 1.8. And finally, because the one year of anniversary uh, of Genshin Impact is coming up, we're going to get a bunch of really cool events, maybe some reruns of uh, previous characters and what I'm going to talk about later in the character banner section, maybe even a new permanent banner, which I'm very confident that something like that is going to happen. I'm not in the majority by any means, but uh, I feel like it would be a nice compromise with the current rerun system that we have. So then 1.9 would be coming around the 21st of October and it would be the last Inazuma story patch. Uh, the same way that we got um, the how can I, the, the, the wrap up uh, Archon quest for Inazuma. Um, that was basically, it was the, I forgot what it was called, when the Traveler and the opposite sibling encounter for the first time, we're probably gonna have a, a an Archon quest like that. Uh, and we were also gonna get a celebration event, in my opinion, sort of like how we got the Monstown Windbloom and the Liu Lantern Festival. We're gonna get the, I don't know, the Inazuma, uh, you know, because it's based in Japan, the the cherry blossom tree event type of thing. You know what I mean? I think that would be a pretty cool and it would be a nice 1.9 pad event, especially because 1.3 was a lantern right and 1.4 was the wind bloom, uh, which was right after uh, the 1.2 dragon spine add-in. So I feel like it's it just makes a lot of sense in my mind. Maybe I'm completely wilding out on this one, but it makes a lot of sense in my mind. Then for 2.0, I think we're gonna get the chasm, which uh, just in case you don't know, there was actually a lot of questions in my previous video about it. The chasm is an update that is, is an area that has been talked about by the devs and teased in the game uh, since like 1.2. <laughs> so it's been a long time coming, but uh, they uh, usually, they, they, I think the, the, the general consensus is that it's going to have a, a weekly boss battle and it's going to have uh, some more like materials for you to gain for future characters, etc, etc. And you know, it'll also add a new area to explore sort of how we got the little uh, 
Dragon Spine area, or how we got the Ashtaha little underground and the Ashtaha uh, story as well. So I think it'll be pretty nice. And then for 2.1, the events patch, uh, it will probably be similar to what we have right now in 1.6, where we get a, a temporary thing to hold us over until the final big Sumeru update and the Sumeru patch. We will also probably gonna get something like how we got with the Beidou story and the Kazuha story right now that will tie the uh, Inazuma story all the way to the Sumeru story. And we will probably get the Dendro element in the form of Baiju, a character that has been in the game for actually quite a bit, but uh, we've only seen, like, talk to him maybe twice. Uh, but we're not gonna get the uh, Traveler because we won't get Sumeru yet. This is just a tease of the Dendro element to get it prepared for when uh, the Dendro element comes out in full force uh, in 2.2 in this case, in my case. But, uh, you know, these these last three depends a lot on what happens uh, when what they show off on today on Friday's patch uh, and uh, like uh, live stream. So, you know, this is very much volatile things, especially since last time I predicted a similar thing. I have the notes right here. I predicted a similar thing. I thought 1.6 was going to be the first Inazuma patch, and we were I was completely wrong. So <laughs> it all depends upon this first update. If this first update that's coming right now, get I get all the points right, and they talk about how they're going to split it into two different sections, I feel like this the rest of this stuff makes a lot of sense. But if not, then we're going to have to do some revisions on the timeline again. Now, in terms of banners, for 1.7, at this point, it's kind of confirmed. We're gonna get Ayaka and Yoimi and Sayu. Uh, first of all, for Ayaka, she I think she's gonna come first out of Ayaka and Yoimi because she's the most hyped character in Genshin history. We've known about her since like the game was announced, and it only makes sense that Ayaka comes first because all of the people that have been saving up for months for Ayaka uh, and are really super excited are gonna spend all their primos on that on that uh, banner. And they won't have uh, enough primos to get both Yoimiya and Sayu, and it'll incentivize people to spend more. Really, Mihoi isn't this for the money, right? So, Ayaka being first to drain out as many primos for the Ayaka supporters uh, makes a lot of sense. And then for the second one, we're gonna get Yoimiya and Sayu together because, you know, to compensate Ayaka being such an overhyped character, we have to put Yoimiya, the, another uh, pretty hyped character, with Sayu, a new four star. Which, you know, doing a, yeah, like I wrote in the notes, doing a double whammy so that people who saved up for Ayaka will be enticed to buy Primos to get Yoimiya or Sayu or both. Then for 1.8, here's what I mentioned earlier, the anniversary rerun event. I personally think we're either going to get multiple reruns or an especially good rerun. I lean more over to the multiple reruns thing because uh, there has been a lot of backlash regarding the weapon banner and how there are multiple five stars in that banner and we can't choose. So unless they introduce a completely reworked banner system with the anniversary update that lets you choose which five star you want to get from a single banner, I'm pretty sure they're just gonna do multiple reruns and you can choose which rerun to wish on because if not, there's gonna be a lot of backlash from not from, I don't know, wishing on the, uh, cause, uh wishing on the like Zhao Kutao uh, Albedo banner and you wanted Xiao or Hu Tao and you ended up getting Albedo type of thing, you know what I mean? So <laughs> it, it doesn't make a lot of sense for them to shoot themselves in the foot on the anniversary of Genshin Impact. And then something that I've been talking about a lot per in DMs with my friends and uh, you know, I've also talked about previously in the other uh, prediction update video, uh, they're gonna introduce a new permanent banner which is gonna cover Venti through Albedo which is five the five newest characters, which is uh, Venti, Klee, um, Tartaglia, Zhongli, and Albedo, uh, all in one banner to make a new permanent banner, the same way that we got the, the current permanent banner has, uh, I think it's D. Luke, uh, Mona, uh, D. Luke, Mona, Jean, Kaching, and Chi Chi, I think. Those are the ones in the permanent banner. So, with it, by introducing another permanent banner, what that also does is it removes the pressure from Mihoyo to rerun the old characters again. 
because the reality of the situation is the more five stars we get into the game, the more characters they're gonna have to rerun uh, for people that want them. For, for someone who missed or has just, has just started playing and really likes Venti because they played the story, if Venti doesn't show up in a rerun again because they're still rerunning, I don't know, Eula and then eventually Kazuha and then Yo and then Ayaka and then Yoimiya, Venti is at the back of the list and they have to go through all of the characters they haven't rerun yet to get back to Venti. So I'm pretty sure that this is a nice compromise for Mihoyo to still print money <laughs> from the old characters, but also be able to rerun the newer characters. And then I feel like to have a nice celebratory anniversary event, when you know, the anniversary day hits, they'll release the Electro Archon. Uh, you know, the story at that point will be wrapped up mostly. We will know at this point who the Electro Archon is. It won't be a spoiler to as many people. And we will get a lot of uh, character development from the Electro Archon. And it just makes a lot of sense to have such a hyped character because uh, when the game originally came out, we got uh, Venti, the Animal Archon, as, the, uh, as our starting character. And so it, may, it would make a lot of sense for to have uh, the Electro Archon as the, the anniversary one to celebrate the same way that we celebrated the launch of the game. For 1.9, I'm pretty sure there's going to be an Albedo rerun. It really depends on uh, 1.8, that's supposed to say. But uh, depending on if 1.8 is uh, a lot of reruns at the same time and they decide to chip in or if it's just one mega rerun, uh, with Albedo, Hu Tower, and Xiao type of thing. Uh, but if it's a lot of reruns, we'll probably get an Albedo dedicated rerun uh, on 1.9. And if not, if it's not Albedo, then it's probably Hu Tower, Xiao. The last Geo character that we have we would have gotten at this point would have been Zhongli in 1.5. So it had it would have been a, a pretty long time ago uh, since that. And uh, yeah, you know. We need some more Geo characters, please. And uh, talking about needing more Geo characters, we also need some more Hydra characters. And that's when Skarmouche comes out. Skarmouche is a super hyped character that ever since the 1.2, 1 1.3 event um, came out. I can't remember when it was exactly, but it was the Fischl and the Mona event. Uh, when that event came out, Skarmouche just basically made everyone love him and uh, he's super hyped and uh, you would think like oh that means Skaramouche is the Fatui Harbinger uh, fighting in Inazuma why would it be Skaramouche and not another unknown Fatui Harbinger? Well first of all because Skaramouche was already introduced beforehand and it would just print money <laughs> and secondly because in his description and in the in-game voice lines they, re they refer to him as a vagrant from Inazuma there's a lot of his lore speculations that he is somewhat related to a character in Inazuma. And uh, his attire seems very Japanese inspired. So I feel like he's kind of, you know, a very good shoe in for the Inazuma Fatui Harbinger. And in that case, an easy hydro print money button character. It would be kind of crazy because, uh, oh wait, no, am I crazy? I think I'm crazy. Is Karamush Hydro? Hold on. Okay, so there is no specific thing on the wiki. So... <laughs> we don't know exactly the element of a Skarmouche. Uh, it could be Hydro, it could be Electro, it would make a lot of sense if it was Electro. Or Electro adjacent, something like Pyro or Anima. But uh, because, especially because, I, now that I'm thinking about it, now that I'm saying it aloud, uh, Tartaglia is Pyro. Uh, hydro, so you don't want uh, Scaramouche to also be in that Fatui Hydro uh, realm. So maybe it's not even a Hydro character, but an Electro character. And we'll get uh, Albedo with Scaramouche. So for 2.0, I think we're going to get the Ganyu rerun at that point. Uh, so Ganyu makes sense in my mind, because after the anniversary event, uh, it gives returning players that, you know, come in for the special stuff a chance to get a really powerful character. Ganyu is undoubtedly the strongest character in the game. So, you know, after the anniversary event has gone and has passed and gone, after we get Scaramouche, you one of the most heavily requested characters in the game. Uh, having Ganyu, one of the most powerful characters in the game, get a rerun, makes a lot of sense for those who want that instant, you know, damage boost. Just boom, and 
have a nice high, uh, cryo damage boost. And then I think we will get uh, an Inazuma Geo character, hopefully, because at this point, um, assuming Scaramouche is Electro or Hydro, we haven't gotten a Geo character, a new Geo character since what? Albedo? Is that correct? Damn, that's a that's a long time. We haven't gotten a new Hydro or a new, new Geo character since Albedo, so we need some more Geo characters. And uh, the last two that are missing in this case are Hydro or Geo. So Geo would make a lot of sense in this case. And then for 2.1, I think we're going to get a the legendary Hu Tao rerun that many people are looking forward to. It really depends once again on the anniversary celebration and how that uh, and how Mihoyo decides to take up the rerun banners uh, for the anniversary celebration. But assuming that they do multiple single reruns and that doesn't interfere with the current rerun system and we keep going down the list, uh, Hu Tao is very probable to be the 2.1 uh, rerun character. And in terms of a new character, in that case, it would either be the another Electro character, hopefully, or a Hydra character. We haven't gotten a Hydra and Azuma character uh, in terms of a new character, because at, a, at that point, every other element is taken care of. And uh, if we get, if Skarmouche is Electro, then this character is Hydro. If Skarmouche is Hydro, then this character can probably be any element, but I think would be, what would be more interesting is to get more Electro elements from the Electro region. So, to summarize, here we have a small table that I'm gonna flash up and on screen, you probably, I mean, you can probably see it already. I'm, 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 what the heck I'm saying, but <laughs> here we go. The theme of the 1.7 update is the first Inazuma patch. The areas are going to be the Inazuma outside areas. The banners are going to be Ayaka and Yomi and Sayu. And the main content is a good chunk of the Inazuma story. The 1.8 or the 2.1 second Inazuma patch is going to have the Inazuma city area. It's going to have the special anniversary reruns, which we don't know right now what it will be. Oh, thank you for the follow, Igonem, on Twitch. Good one. But yeah, as I was saying, the anniversary reruns is happening. Uh, so we're probably gonna get a bunch of characters and the Electro Archon banner in order to, you know, have a, another Archon on the anniversary. It would be kind of a nice tradition to have the Archons uh, almost on every every six months, kind of. It would be kind of cool. In terms of main content, we're gonna get a good chunk, if not all of the remaining in Azuma story, the main story that is. And then for 1.9 or 2.2, we're gonna get the last Inazuma patch. We're gonna get a boss battle like we got for Liyue. Uh, we're probably gonna get an Albedo rerun with a Scaramouche banner. Uh, and the final part of the story, of the Inazuma story, tying it up with Sumeru. Sort of how we got for uh, Act 1, uh, Chapter 4, if that's how you say it. Then 2.0 slash 2.3 will be the Chasm, where boss battles like we got for Zhongli's story is gonna be the main focus as well as a Ganyu rerun and a Pyro Inazuma character banner. Wait, a Pyro Inazuma character banner? No, a Geo Inazuma character banner. What the heck? A Geo Inazuma character banner. And of course, the main content is just the chasm and everything that comes with the chasm. And 2.1 and 2.4 is gonna be the events patch, which is gonna revamp the Inazuma story, giving some, uh, you know, an Albedo rerun, a final Inazuma character, Wait, what? Okay, I had written the wrong thing, but 2.1 slash 2.4 is gonna be the events patch. We're gonna have a 1.6 like thing where we get a new temporary area to explore. We're gonna have an Albedo rerun with an Albedo. What are these notes? Okay, we're gonna get a Hu Tao rerun with the final in Izuma character, hopefully a Hydro character. And we're gonna get, uh, you know, setting up Sumeru and 2.1 would be arriving right at the beginning of, right at the end of January, beginning of February, which it would be a nice moment to do, to celebrate Chinese New Year and the, that type of stuff. So, you know, it would be a pretty nice chunk updates coming soon. But with all of that said, thank you already so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you for being here and sticking by till the end. I'm gonna be reacting live to the 1.7 slash 2.0 um, live stream update. Uh, right on Twitch, twitch.tv for slash Luka2708. Hopefully you all enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. I love making these little theorize and update videos. And uh, 
Oh, thank you for 300 and something subscribers at this point. We've crushed every metric that we that I thought we were gonna crush. I was literally two days ago, I was at barely 200 subscribers and now we're at 320 something. So thank you so very much for all the support. And uh, yeah, I'll see you on uh, on Thursday. I'm gonna stream on Friday. I'm gonna stream the up in the Zuma update uh, anniversary of uh, live stream. And on Friday, there's also gonna be all the videos recapping the Inazuma live stream reaction. Uh, so uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Bye bye, bless all the love, and I'll catch you next time. Bye bye.